So, I bought God of War on PC basically on release. I wanted to play it on PC for the usual reasons. Higher frame rate, better resolution, improving the game through mods, all that. However, I ran into a problem with the controls. I couldn't change them. If I went to the menu where the control remaps were, it just wouldn't let me access the page. That sucked, but what was worse was that the gyro was completely non-functional. I figured that this was just another PC game launch bug problem. We get enough of those. I reported on Steam discussion forums with the expectation that it would get fixed, but it's been over four months now, and as of the latest patch, the issue remains unresolved and I think pretty much untouched. I think I figured out what's missing here, but I still don't understand why it's like this. Except, I think it's intentional. Not only that, I found numerous other games that have this same problem. Spider-Man 2, Ghost of Tsushima, The Horizon games. Mostly Sony games, but I found at least one multi-platform game that also does this. For some reason, multiple games have been designed by their official developers to not register controller buttons when Steam input is activated. Only game actions. Does that sentence make sense to you? Probably not, and that's why I'm making this video. It requires an explanation of how controllers work, what Steam input is, what it does, and why there is now, for some reason, a disconnect between these things. I'm not saying that it's especially complicated, but it's difficult to put into words or text alone, so it's my hope that this video helps visually illustrate the problem to make it easier to understand. Because in some cases, this issue is minor, almost negligible, but in others, like mine, it's rendered owning the PC version of God of War Ragnarok entirely pointless to me. I'm hoping to get eyes on this issue because it seems to be spreading throughout the entire industry and I want it to stop. And I'm hoping that you'll agree. Let's begin with how this is supposed to work, which is how it works on the PlayStation 5. On the PS5, if I want to remap my control scheme, I go to this menu and change things around how I like. And when I go to this menu, I can find the motion sensing option, activate it, and now the gyroscope in my controller helps refine my aim. You might notice I'm using a third party controller. This is the Razer Wolverine V2 Pro, and it's my preferred way to play, especially any game that requires aiming. If you're thinking that it being a third party controller might be a factor of why I'm having this problem, well, you're not wrong, but not the way I think you're expecting to be. But this is what I'm after. This game being played by this controller, which allows me the extra buttons and motion sensing functionality that helps me game with a slight change to the control scheme that suits my preferences. This is the goal. Now, on PC, Steam Input is a program that is designed to help players in achieving this kind of goal. Some of the following explanation is going to be really basic, and I apologize for that, but I really need to lay out how things work here in very simple terms to explain what's gone wrong. So, Steam Input was designed by Valve to enable any controller to function with any game. Without it, you're mainly relying on the game itself having supporting controller compatibility, and if it doesn't have that, or if it's otherwise poorly designed, then you're out of luck. So Valve made Steam input to combat that by acting as a go-between between, between the controller and the game so if there's any issues with the inputs your controller is sending, it is able to fix them before passing them off to the game. It does this through a template that you either set up yourself or you can download a pre-made one. Steam offers a couple default options, there are community shared ones, and there's ones from official sources. So the sequence of events if you're using Steam input goes as follows. One, you press a button on the controller. 2. The controller registers the input of that button. 3. It sends that input to the PC. 4. Steam intercepts that input and reads it. 5. Steam references what this input is supposed to mean based on the template that it is working with. 6. Steam creates a new input that is correspondent with that template. 7. The game receives the new input from Steam. 8. The game reads what the corresponding action is to that input, and 9. The game performs the corresponding action. We'll use God of War 2018 as an example here, which I will refer to as God of War 1 for simplicity's sake. If you didn't change anything, you're using a default gamepad template that gives you the same control scheme as comes with the game. So if you send a square signal from your controller to Steam, Steam will say, yeah that's square, It'll send its own square signal to the game, the game will read, yeah that's square, and have Atreus fire the arrow. Just a quick note here, 
The Steam gamepad graphic design for setting up the templates seems to be based on an Xbox controller or a generic controller that happens to use Xbox terminology for its buttons. So it has A, B, X, Y for face buttons, uh, left bumper, right trigger, and not X, circle, square, triangle, uh, L1, R2. This doesn't matter, it just seems to be visual and it just looks like Valve didn't make a Sony design for this, but if you hear me saying that it's a square button but you see X button on screen, that's why. With Steam input acting as a middleman, it's possible for it to add features that might not exist in a given game. Basic example, but there are many games where there isn't an in-game option to remap controls. Using God of War 1 as an example again, there are a couple control schemes on offer, but the game doesn't allow you to bind triangle to Atreus firing an arrow. Well, with Steam input, you can bind the signal of the triangle button input coming from the controller to have a square button output. So if you press triangle, it will send a triangle signal to Steam. Steam will go, yeah, that's triangle. Send a square signal to the game. The game will go, yeah, that's square, and it'll have Atreus fire the arrow. And that's it at its most basic. At its best, it can add whole new features to a game. Unlike its sequel, God of War 1 does not have any motion sensing capabilities in the game. However, Steam Input has a function that allows it to sense a controller's gyroscope, translate what that motion would read as as a joystick movement, and apply it to the game. Even though God of War 1 does not have any motion sensing capabilities on its own, Steam Input does, and it can send signals to the game that allow it to mimic that. So Steam Input is a very useful program that allows players a lot of flexibility in how they want to play their games. Except in God of War Ragnarok, the first game I encountered where it actually takes away a feature. So why is Ragnarok like this? Well, here's its Steam input template page, and can you see what's different here? Santa Monica Studios was kind enough to provide the official Steam input template, which has its signals expressed not through controller inputs, but direct in-game actions. The triangle button is not triangle. It's not even the Y button. It is signature weapon ability. It's like that for the other inputs too. X is not X. It's interact. R1 is not R1. It's light attack. You don't even really have thumbsticks here. You have move and camera. Why does this matter? Because these functions aren't just longer names they use for buttons. Steam isn't sending a controller input at all anymore. It's sending the direct game action on what the game is supposed to perform. If we refer back to our sequence, this is eliminating step 8. This is where the game would interpret and translate a button prompt into a game action. But now it just skips to step 9 because it already knows the action it's supposed to perform. There's no interpretation necessary. And maybe it seems like this is more efficient, but this causes some serious problems. Because if the game senses that you're using Steam input, it no longer even registers button inputs. It can't do anything with a square or triangle signal. It can only interpret inputs as in-game actions now. It's almost as if these buttons don't even exist. If you want to remap controls, you're not even allowed to go to this page. You have to do that by going to the Steam input template and changing which button corresponds to which direct in-game action. And if you try to assign gamepad buttons as your control scheme in the Steam input page, then they just become non-functional. You will use the direct game actions or you don't play the game. In case you think this is because I'm using a third-party controller, no. If I use the official DualSense controller, it's the same result. It can't read a controller input, it cannot access the control remap page. And this explains why the motion sensing doesn't work either. This is probably a good time to mention that whatever Santa Monica Studios' intention was, the template they provided is seriously flawed, because it cannot read signals from a controller's motion sensing at all. The gyroscope, yes, but not the motion sensing. I'll explain in a second, but later on I will show you a better implemented version of this, but first I want to illustrate how poorly conceived Ragnarok's setup is. Remember, this game only accepts direct actions now, so the only option I have to enable gyro is to tie it to camera. Just look at this. It is so laggy, and so slow, and no matter how I play around with the settings, I can't make it more responsive. The best way I can describe it is that Instead of matching my movements, it's like there's this giant invisible thumbstick that's floating right in front of me, and it will move in the direction that I am pointing my controller at. So, sure, I can move left, but not from a resting position. I have to already be pointing left when I activate gyro and tilt it all the way left. 
it is impossible to play like this because even at its best, it's lagging like a full half second from the movement you make. And it will always overshoot where you want it to stop because you can't just stop. You have to return to the neutral position of the invisible thumbstick. Remember, this is how the motion sensing worked on my PlayStation 5. This is how the motion sensing worked on God of War 1, a game that doesn't have internal motion sensing. This is a joke. And you know the funniest part? If the game had just let me use the full capacity of Steam Input's abilities, I could just replicate what I did with God of War 1, make my own motion sensing. But if I try to attach the gyro to joystick movement, as I did for that game, that won't work, because joystick is not a direct game action, it's a controller input. I don't have a joystick, I only have camera. So, the situation has just been really confusing to me, and to try and understand it, I've been trying to look at other games that also have this strange game action setup. I decided to buy the recent Spider-Man 2 to test how it runs on my PC, and it has the same setup. Does it have the same problems? Well, I can't access the controller remap screen, just like in God of War Ragnarok. And if I go to the Steam template, I have jump, dodge, and attack. If I assign them X, O, and square, does the game read them? No. Well, I also have Ghost of Tsushima. I haven't played that on PC yet, but let's, yeah, it's the same thing. No access to the remap screen. No response if I assign normal game buttons. Have I found any solutions? If I had, I wouldn't be making this video. But I have found some stuff that maybe can help someone else. The best solution to this is to just turn off Steam input altogether. If you do, then you're eliminating steps 4 through 7 in our sequence, which means that the controller is now interacting with the game as directly as possible. And indeed, that lets it act as normal. I can go into the remap screen and use gyro. However, this is not something I can do, because here is where my controller being third party comes in. This controller is programmed to operate on PS5, but not with any specific games. So when plugged into the PC, the game doesn't treat it like it does a regular Sony controller. Another way is you can connect Steam's input gyro to the mouse, and that gives you some functionality, but it's messy. If you have the temerity to move while aiming, then your HUD is going to flicker between Sony icons and mouse and keyboard, and also there's this odd visual skipping effect that happens if you move the controller and the mouse at the same time. So if you can stand that, there you go, but I can't. Lastly, DS4 Windows is a program that basically tricks the computer into thinking that whatever controller you're using, it's actually a DualShock 4. That is, if you have a controller that is actually supported by them. I do not. Unfortunately, even though they do support some Razer controllers, my Wolverine is not one of them. On a more hopeful side, there are a few games that have implemented direct game actions better. The Horizon games have both managed to have functioning gyro aiming. Forbidden West has something called gyroscopic look, which is a function I can't replicate and I don't even know what it does, but it does mean that when I turn on motion aiming in Forbidden West, it actually works. And it's even more strange in the Zero Dawn remaster. Because there is no actual gyro program enabled in its Steam put page, but if I activate it in the in-game menu, it works. Now, there is one more game I want to talk about. This is the one game that has implemented this direct game action functionality better than anyone else. Death Stranding. Because it is the only game where if you change the Steam input template to include button controls, it still works. Look, I just changed change posture to B and it still functions. I found the direct game action unicorn and it proves whatever developers get out of using this format, it doesn't have to come at the expense of player options. So after all this, I'm still sitting here not understanding, almost more confused than ever. When this was just Ragnarok, I was sure that this was just some strange oversight and I still think it is. Surely Santa Monica Studios didn't mean to destroy an important feature of their game, but it's not just Ragnarok that's doing this. It seems to be most new Sony releases. I did a quick sample of recently released games, and Dynasty Warriors Origins is the only non-Sony game I found with this setup. It means that it's not exclusive to Sony, but it doesn't seem popular outside of them either. But regardless who is doing it, I want to know why. I've gone over how this risks ruining entire features, but even when it doesn't break anything, like in Horizon Forbidden West, it still seems so unnecessary. Most of these games have an in-game remap page. Why prioritize Steam Input over your own design? I've gone over how Steam Input is a great program that can help games that need it, 
but games like these already have most of these features built in. But instead, developers are cordoning these features off so that we're forced to use the Steam input version of them. Even if there is some benefit to this that I'm just not seeing, what is the point of making in-game control functions inaccessible? All I can say is that I hope this video has demonstrated why this is an issue, because I haven't seen anyone else talk about it. Which is understandable, because it requires jumping through a few hoops to even get an error, and assuming the implementation is done well, it's not going to be an issue for many people. But for a subset of people, like me, it can destroy entire game features. It's very frustrating and depressing that I paid $60 and I've been waiting and hoping a patch would fix what would be a complete non-issue if the game just worked like it normally should. To be honest, I'm really just hoping that when I post this, I'm just going to get a flood of comments telling me that there's some obvious use in-game control switch that I somehow missed and I can just flip that and have everything work. Thank you for watching.